All right, great. So uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Torhir Amba from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Uh, and his talk today will be on M&Ms, modules, and monads. So please take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you to the organizers for allowing me to hold this, the first uh, talk in this uh, summer's uh, group seminar. Um, the previous years have been great, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the talks uh, on the coming summer as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, my uh, uh, talk will be about uh, modules and monads, or short M&Ms, um, because once you are, uh, can make a, like a funny title, then you should. It's obligatory in some way. Uh, so uh, let me see. There, um, I pasted in a picture of us this uh, session. This is a painting of a group of mathematicians studying M&Ms. So this will be us this uh, session. And hopefully by the end of the talk, we will be as confused as them. Uh, they look pretty confused. Okay, uh, and a couple of disclaimers. Uh, this talk is about like things happening in uh, or based in algebra. I'm not an algebra based. So um, even though these are like algebraic gadgets and algebraic things, I mainly care about their uses in like homotopy theory. Uh, and it also means that I might say some uh, slightly like stupid stuff about uh, algebra. Uh, hopefully everything I say will be uh, correct. Um, and uh, if they're not, then uh, blame me. Uh, second, I'm not a category theorist. Uh, so I, hopefully I won't say stupid stuff about categories, but uh, it might happen. Uh, so if I say something stupid, then just um, assume enough pro properties on your category until it's true, I think. That's usually the strategy. Yeah, so uh, the main goal for this uh, project are these kind of ideas that I'm presenting here, uh, which is not completely finished. Uh, is to create alternative ways to view the category of K and local spectra. I'm going to say a bit about what these words mean for the people that are not familiar with the chromatic homotopy theory uh, later. Okay, so uh, the goal of this talk is to figure out what a module or which categories are categories of modules. So if you have seen like the um, uh, videos on YouTube of Jubilee who is figuring out in a room which one is a module, which one is not. So this is the goal of the talk. We're going to create some strategies for figuring out uh, which categories are actually just module categories. And it's going to turn out that a lot of categories are actually module categories. And um, if this thumbnail ends up on YouTube, then it's going to be really like clickbait. That's fun. OK. Um, the classical strategy of making modules is making um, or basing them around the rings. And you can also make the dual statement or like making co-modules over co-rings. So I'm just some quick recaps um, about what these things are. I just have to move this window. There we go. OK, so with a ring object, this is like a generalization of the classical uh, ring object we're familiar with from algebra. Uh, is an object in some symmetric nodal category, just meaning we can tensor things together and, um, and make maps out of them. Uh, so it's an um, object in the symmetric nodal category together with two maps, which is the unit and the multiplication, uh, which satisfies the equivalent um, like rules of unitality and associativity that we're used with from algebra. And uh, we not denote the category of ring objects, confusingly enough, by alg uh, C, like algebras in C. Um, and commutative um, ring objects by commutative algebras or CLG. And examples, um, this will be like both from classical algebra and infinity categories, I'm guess, I guess. So uh, in, the, um, in the category of abelian groups, then uh, ring objects are just the classical rings and commutative rings are the classical commutative rings. Um, rings in the category of spectra are E1 ring spectra, also known as A infinity ring spectra or associative ring spectra. And the commutative rings are the infinity ring spectra. And you might know there's like a whole tower of intermediary uh, things. Uh, these can be described in uh, slightly different ways, just using operads and other kinds of fancy material, which I won't cover. Okay, uh, and we can just completely dualize these um, these ideas. Uh, so with a coring object, that will mean an object in the category, which is still symmetric monoidal. With together with two maps, which is like the co-unit and the co-multiplication, satisfying co-unitality and co-associativity. And examples are, for example, co-rings in the category of vector spaces are co-algebras. And uh, for uh, any uh, symmetric nodal category, the unit is both a, a ring and a co-ring object, which we will use later. Okay, so these are the classical objects you make 
module categories over and co-module categories over. But uh, for the purposes of this talk, we'll be a bit more general. So we will use monads and co-monads instead of just ring objects. So uh, for uh, those not familiar with the monads and co-monads, then uh, a monad is a functor uh, from C, which is now still a symmetric nodal category in uh, our uh, situation. But it, it, more generally, it can be like anything. Um, so yeah, it's a end of factor together with two natural transformations called the unit and the multiplication satisfying unit and associativity conditions. And um, you can think about it as like a ring object in the category of end of factors. Um, so just it has a multiplication or the um, tensor product is given by composition of functors and the identity functor is the identity. And duly, a uh, co-ring object in this um, uh, frontier, end of frontier category is called a co-monad. And examples can be, if you have already a community ring or a co-community co co-ring, then tensoring with this ring is a monad, and tensoring with the co-ring is a co-monad. Uh, and uh, yeah, here I've written like internal HOM um, objects, which is just to uh, make the composition behave nicely. So uh, take some nicely structured enough categories such that you have like an internal HOM. Um, then uh, homing out of, of uh, a co-ring is a monad, and homing out of a ring is a co-monad. Okay, so these are the, the four types of, of uh, examples I will mainly care about, but of course you can have any uh, monad or co-monad you want. Okay, so this is a, a nice painting of a monad, uh, in case you were wondering uh, how they look like or how they feel like. Uh, so take this with a grain of salt, uh, but yes, this is at least what the Dali 2 thinks a monad looks like. Okay, so uh, modules and co-modules, what are these? So if you have a monad on some category C, uh, then an M module is an object together with a map from M of X to X, satisfying the classical like unit and action axioms that we're used to from algebra. So this is a generalization of um, just tensoring with the ring of having a, a map from uh, R times the object to the object itself, which is like the action or scaling map sometimes known as. So uh, the canonical, canonical examples are objects of the four M MX, uh, which are called free M modules. Um, when you take a uh, map from M MX to MX, this is, can be just given by uh, the multiplication in the monad. So these are kind of the canonical examples. The category of uh, all uh, modules uh, over some monad is called the eilenberg morgan category, and it's uh, denoted by mod M, and um, the category of free modules uh, we denote by mod M uh, free, or FR. Uh, there are a bunch of different notations for these categories, um, so um, yeah, you might see that someone uh, use a slightly different um, uh, like uh, notation in the literature, but this is just uh, what I'm used to. And uh, and examples, um, the eilenberg more category of the monad given by tensoring with a ring object is the normal category of modules over this ring. And um, if you're familiar with like the more weird side of um, of uh, some uh, yeah algebra some um, uh, the work, that previous work by Eilenberg and uh, stuff in the 40s, then um, the Eilenberg more category of the monad given by internal homing out of a co-module or a co-ring, sorry, is the category called contramodules over C. And uh, this is like the, the evil twin of um, tensoring with the, the co-ring. So um, if you have ever looked at co-modules, then contramodules is kind of the, the evil twin of, of uh, co-modules. They will show up a bit later, uh, but uh, they're uh, fun and very understudied, in my humble opinion. Okay, uh, duly, then we have a co-module over a co-monad. Uh, it's an object together with a map from the object to C of that object, satisfying the normal co-unit and co-action uh, co axioms. And the canonical samples are, again, the free ones, or in this case, they are called co-free. Um, and there are the, of the form CX for some object X. So we don't know the corresponding categories of co-modules and the co-free co-modules by uh, co-modules over C and co-modules over C with FR for free, uh, because I don't want to write co-FR just because that's longer. So I just use free, but it's kind of dual free in some way. Okay, 
uh, examples are, uh, as before, um, the Albert um, Moore category of the comonad given by tensoring by a co ring is a normal category of co modules over this co ring. And uh, the Albert Moore category of, um, of uh, the co monad given by coming out of a ring object is actually equivalent to the module category over R. And this is kind of why I, I told you that the contra module category is the evil twin because. Um, in the case of rings, then the evil twin is uh, the same as the model category. But in uh, core rings, you have this kind of duality pairing between core modules and contra modules, which is a bit more interesting. And this has a lot of implications for classical representation theory of rings and core rings, um, which yeah, I won't say anything about. But for those interested, then it's cool, I guess. OK. So uh, where do we get this, um, these, um, these uh, monads and co-monads from? So uh, the, the main uh, construction where, where we have easy access to monads and co-monads is from adjunctions. So if we have some adjunction um, like F, um, Fu from C to D and U goes from D to C, um, I guess uh, a lot of people denote like having arrows both ways. I haven't done this here, I see. Um, but yeah, so the composition uh, first F then U is uh, a monad, and the position uh, composition of first U then F gives a co-monad. So uh, first taking the left adjoint, then the right adjoint is a monad, and for then uh, if you take the right adjoint and the left adjoint, then you get a co-monad. And this is for every adjunction and no restrictions on anything. And actually, um, you can prove or it's. Uh, quite easy to uh, to show that every uh, monad and comonad comes from uh, such an adjunction. So uh, before we had the the Eilenberg Moore category and the Kleisler category of of um, some comonad, and these together with like the free forgetful adjunction and co free co forgetful uh, adjunction uh, proves that every adjunction or every monad and comonad comes from some adjunction. And in fact, as I've written here, there's a category of adjunctions over a co-monad or a monad. And the initial object is the classic category, the category of free uh, modules, and the terminal object is the Elmer Moore category of all modules. Okay, so uh, if the category D is equivalent to the Einberg Moore category of the uh, composition F then U, uh, in the monad, then we say that the adjunction is monadic. And dually, if C is equivalent to that more category of Fu, we say that the junction is comonadic. So this is just uh, a way to recognize when um, we are actually like studying uh, things related to um, or um, uh, kind of things that looks like free forgetful adjunctions or co free co -for, uh, forgetful adjunctions. Okay. So here's the first um, like theorem of the day. And uh, in the abstract of the talk, I think I would uh, like mentioned, we're gonna look at variants of uh, the monoidal Barbeck theorem. So let's first um, yeah, try to uh, see what the monoidal Barbeck theorem is. So we take two categories. They are sufficiently nice. They are um, symmetric monoidal, they're stable, and then they're presentable. And a nice way to write this is that they are community algebra objects in the stable category of presentable categories, or PRL. And uh, we have a monoidal adjunction, just meaning that um, uh, F is a monoidal functor, so it sends tensor products to uh, tensor products, or it splits, um, and it sends the unit to the unit. OK, so we have some criteria for uh, recognizing when such an adjunction is actually monadic. So that was our the criteria. Uh, if U preserves call limits, so the, the right adjoint, U is conservative, and there's a natural projection formula. And this uh, projection formula follow, uh, like comes naturally from the, the, the adjunction. So there's always a map from the left guy to the right guy here. But uh, when this uh, natural map is a, a equivalence, then the adjunction is monadic. Furthermore, there is an equivalence of monads Fu to uh, tensoring with U of the unit in D. So um, U is uh, lax monoidal because it's um, a right adjunct to a monoidal functor. So it preserves ring objects. The unit is always a ring object. So U of 1 is a ring object. 
So tensoring with these ring objects is just the module category over this ring. And we have an equivalence because uh, the adjunction is monadic. So this gives an equivalence between D and the category of modules over U of one. And we're taking modules in the category C. So this is a recognition theorem that uh, allows us to recognize um, when we have um, uh, when we have a, like a monoidal junction, when this category uh, is actually like equivalent to just modules over, um, yeah, something uh, reminiscent of the unit object. If u was also like a monoidal functor, then u of one would be the monoidal unit in F, and this would kind of be trivial. Um, uh, yeah, at least in. Uh, no, it's not trivial, but uh, yeah, forget that. But um, it's uh, at least in the recognition theorem for allowing us to say when uh, certain categories are actually module categories. This is for the introduction, like using this uh, uh, the prism uh, module uh, uh, jubilee uh, clickbait video type thing. Then this is like, uh, I think you could ask directly to each person figuring out are you a module or not just by giving them an injunction and checking some small list of properties. Okay, so uh, the main example uh, I'm interested in, in or it's not maybe the main example, but one example which is quite easy to state using this uh, monoidal um, Barbeck theorem is to look at chromatic localization. And in order to describe this, I need to give you like a, a two minute, three minute crash course in chromatic homotopy theory, uh, which is gonna be intense, uh, but, uh, the main ideas should hopefully be uh, kind of uh, come through uh, and none of the technical details. And uh, this background picture is what uh, Dali 2 thinks chromatic localization looks like, uh, which is not how I think about it myself, but it's an interesting concept. Okay, so um, you can think about chromatic homotopy theory as a way of passing from stable homotopy theory to um, some easier, more digestible um, system of categories where which essentially describes the same information so um the kind of famous analogy is using wavelengths of light so if you think about the category of a spectra which is like all topological information you could dream and hope of and you take this which is like pure white light it's the essential thing we want to study uh, and you pass it through some um uh, some machine or like a prism it splits uh, the light out in different wavelengths. Uh, so yeah, you take uh, the category spectrum, you pass it through the chromatic machine trademark, and you get out these categories uh, called uh, KN local spectra. Now this KN is a um, very important object in, in uh, stable homotopy theory and chromatic homotopy theory, and it's called the Morava K theories. Um, and um, very like briefly, there are the building blocks of stable homotopy theory. You can kind of build up everything from these individual pieces. Uh, so they are like uh, kind of um, the individual uh, wavelengths. So it's the pure color blue, it's the pure color green, et cetera, et cetera. And you have an infinite tower of these uh, colors. And uh, you can kind of glue these um, these uh, pieces together up to some to some um, to some level. This level is usually called the height. So if you go from zero to height n, then uh, you glue these together in a cool way, um, uh, which is yeah, not trivial, but you, uh, you you can do it, and you get these um, categories called um, height n, like e n localized uh, spectra. These are denoted by SPEN, or sub, sometimes uh, like they you use subscript N, and there's a bunch of different ways to 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 do this. And uh, the cool thing is that there's a lot of uh, famous theorems in uh, stable homotopy theory uh, relating uh, to to these concepts. So you can kind of take the co-limit over all these Ns in EN local spectra and get back the category of spectra. Uh, at least uh, the finite uh, spectra, if you want to be really careful. careful. And also, if you pass from spectra to some can local spectra, then the fiber of this, these uh, localizations is like every thick subcategory of spectra. You can study like the, the thick, um, or the, the Balmer spectrum, if you're into like tensor triangulated geometry, the Balmer spectrum is, is given by just um, 
um, the kernel of um, of um, yeah we need to pass to homology to get some kernel but uh, yeah this is essentially is uh, the idea okay so this is the, the the chromatic machine it turns white light into different wavelengths that's the idea and uh, if we collect these wavelengths uh, up to some fixed uh, fixed wavelength from zero up to that then we can use the local spectrum and then the next talk is uh, i think is going to be on like rational homotopy theory and uh, this bottom um this bottom category spk0 is essentially um rational stable homotopy theory so you will learn more about uh, these kinds of ideas uh, next uh, next talk on on Wednesday okay so uh, what we're interested in for uh, right now is this category spen of en local spectra okay and that uh, factor going from spectra to en local spectra is called chromatic localization okay so and we take this um, this chromatic localization and this is uh, by uh, some deep uh, black magic it's a smashing factor uh, meaning that localization at um, at en is the same as tensoring with the localized sphere or sphere spectrum and uh, this uh, localization is uh, left adjoint to the inclusion of um, yeah it's supposed to be en local spectra not uh, yeah spn is an alternative uh, notation um yeah but it's a uh, left at end to the inclusion and this uh, inclusion is conservative it uh, preserves columns and we have a protection formula and um, you can read this very small short proof i guess which is trivial um meaning that the adjunction satisfied the barbeck theorem which gives us an equivalence um of en local spectra and modules over the en local sphere and this is a very like uh yeah, so there's a too involved uh, way to prove this theorem. There are easier ways, and it follows directly from from the functor being smashing. Uh, but this is like I just wanted to show an example of the the previous theorem. And yeah, if you care about uh, chromatic homotopy theory, then this is at least a nice thing to have. And uh, if you take uh, localize at k n instead of e n, then this is not true. Uh, the k -N category of k n local spectra is not equivalent to modules over the k n local which is a very uh, like a big drawback of uh, of local spectra but it makes everything more interesting but we're gonna see later that we might be able to salvage at least some some form of uh, description of k local spectra as some sort of modules or comodules okay so that's chromatic localization the other example i wanted to bring forth is a bit more algebraic um, so we'll let a be an abelian category with a local grading this is just an endo functor um and the uh, da it's uh, it's derived infinity category the periodic derived category uh which is kind of since um you take uh, chain complexes of objects you get one grading and you already have a grading so now you have kind of two grading in two directions and the periodic derived category is just uh, the complexes where these two gradings kind of coincide and then um, yeah, you have uh, the inclusion of the periodic um, uh, drug category into the drug category has a periodization uh, left adjoint, which just essentially collapses the two gradings. And uh, this is a smashing functor, so we can use the exact same arguments as above uh, to um, to say that this satisfies the monoidal Barbeck theorem, uh, giving an equivalence of the periodic drug category and modules over the periodicized unit. Which is uh, yeah another example. It's an interesting example in uh, for me at least uh, because I really like to study um, uh, what's called uh, algebraic models uh, of stable infinity categories. Um, so there's a, um, a theorem called Franke uh, Franke's algebraicity theorem, uh, which allows us to construct equivalences between um, infinity categories just truncated as some homotopy height by using homology theories. So if you have some uh, nice homology theory from a stable infinity category or to some uh, abelian category with some um, uh, more criteria, uh, then we get equivalences of um, homotopy K categories between uh, C and the derived periodic, the periodic derived category of A. An example of this is the category we just saw, uh, with, which is the, the category of EN local spectra. And then now uh, the category A has to be uh, co-modules over some fancy object called a Hopf algebra. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And the homology theory is just uh, EN homology, 
uh, or uh, it can be described as first 10 string with the uh, en and then taking homotopy groups. And this gives them the equivalence between um, en local spectra and the periodic Dirac category uh, up yeah, with height uh, 2 p minus 2 minus n squared minus n. And this uh, very specific um, like number is uh, it comes from uh, some properties of, of this um, abelian category comodules over en star en. It has to do with like cohomological dimension and stuff like this. So that's another, um, it's a reason why to care about these periodic derived categories. Okay, so um, in the abstract, I also said that we wanted to show some uh, localized and co-localized versions of the uh, monoidal bar bacterium. So this is a man looking through a magnifying glass. So we're gonna zoom in and do like a local version. Um, so the local monoidal bar bacterium, um, uh, which is by uh, Behrens and Shaw. Uh, so we let's, let uh, F uh, be a monoidal functor and U its, um, its uh, right adjoint. And we take some object in C. And we uh, localize um, both, uh, yeah, we localize C at this object E, and we localize D at the, carrier or the image of E uh, in D. We get an induced adjunction just given by um, restricting to the local objects and then taking inclusion adjoint and going down to local, uh, which is also a barbeck adjunction. In particular, this gives an equivalence of the um, uh, category D localized at F of E, the image of this object E, and modules over the, um, the local unit or the local U of the unit in, um, in, um, in E local object in C. So um, yeah, we're not going to focus too much about this uh, this uh, example uh, because or this uh, theorem because I don't really have uh, many examples where I'm uh, yeah where I'm familiar with uh, with uh, why or how it's used and stuff. But uh, there's um, as, uh, at least some use cases in like uh, equivariant homotopy theory and um, and also like motivic homotopy theory, for example. But uh, instead, we're going to go the, the dual way or co-local uh, monoidal bar bacterium. Uh, and I haven't uh, like put a, a, a reference. Um, I think it's an original theorem, but it's also might follow from uh, some work by Behrens and Shaw, which I haven't like properly checked. So I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Um, but uh, we'll let um, now, uh, instead of F being a left adjoint, F is a, no, wait, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm skipping ahead, uh, but we have the same uh, monoidal bar back adjunction as last time, and we take a compact object in the category C. And the compact just means some sort of smallness con condition. Uh, so think like um, finite dimensional vector space is the compact object in vector spaces, for example. Um, let uh, uh, C uh, k torsion denote the localizing ideal generated by k, and this also is like the, a category that has a bunch of different uh, notations in the literature. Uh, sometimes it's called like cellular, cellularization, cellularization. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes just like localizing uh, ideal or localizing subcategory. Uh, but uh, uh, this is the um, uh, notation I'm, I'm used to. Um, and it has to do with torsion. So, um, so that's why the, the, the torsion is um, apparent. And uh, this adjunction also induces a uh, adjunction on the torsion objects and the um, torsion object generated by the image of this compact object in D. And this is also a Barbeck adjunction. In particular, we get an equivalence between um, D FK torsion, which since um, the original adjunction is, um, is um, satisfies the Barbeck uh, criteria, then this is equivalent to modules over U of one. So modules over U of 1, uh, K torsion is equivalent to uh, modules over the torsion unit or the torsion U of the unit. Okay, so how uh, can we get an examples from this? Uh, we are already seeing like the, the periodic drag category um, and uh, we can now mix this together with torsion to create some uh, interesting, uh, or I think interesting effects at least. Um, so uh, we take the same um, uh, periodic drug category we had before. Uh, just now we choose the um, abelian category to be modules over some ring. Uh, so we have a periodization functor, which is just smashing a left adjoint and an inclusion. Um, 
and we take some uh, nice ideal um, nice here means like finitely generated at least and uh, maybe some more uh, properties um, then the induced barbeck junction gives an equivalence of periodic drug category and then we take a torsion object um, and modules over the torsion unit or the a periodicized uh, torsion unit or torsion periodicized unit depending on how you want to uh, say these words together um, in the derived category of modules and then take torsion objects in that category instead so uh, kind of a way to think about it is that uh, it doesn't really matter if you first periodicize and then torsion uh, or if you first torsion then periodicize Okay, if we define um, the IA torsion object in the actual abelian category to just be those objects that vanish when tensoring with IK for some power of uh, of the of the ideal, um, this K is supposed to be a, a small K. Um, so these are like actual torsion modules, um, like the classically. And then we can use the above equivalence uh, to actually prove that you can uh, pull I torsion out of the periodic derived category. So um, the I torsion object in the periodic derived category is the same as the periodic uh, derived category of the torsion uh, module category, which is kind of an alternative way to, to view like these uh, objects. And for me, this is um, again important in relation to uh, Franke's algebra based theorem uh, because you can kind of uh, get an exotic algebraic equivalence and then take torsion objects and get a new exotic algebraic equivalence. Okay. So um, now we're going to uh, not look at like the, the monoidal barbeck theorem, but we're going to take a dual statement or try to get uh, something that's equivalent to co modules instead of being equivalent to modules. So um, now F is the right adjoint, and it's a monoidal right adjoint, which is not very usual, but it happens um, at least in some places in the in nature. Um, and U is now the left adjoint. Okay, if uh, the left adjoint preserves limits, is conservative, and we have again a projection formula, then uh, this adjunction is commonadic. Uh, and furthermore, there is an equivalence of co-monads between the co-monad you get from the adjunction and tensoring with uh, u of one. And now u of one is, uh, or uh, one is a co-ring object, which I mentioned at the beginning, and u is now a oplax uh, monoidal functor, which means it preserves co-rings, co-ring objects. So u of one is a co-ring object, meaning that tensoring with, uh, and it's supposed to be tensoring with u of one, not just u of one. Yeah, the tensoring with U of one is a um, a co-monad, so um, we get an equivalence of uh, between D and co-modules over this co-monad given by tensoring with the, um, the co-ring object that is U of one, and this uh, leads us to uh, this is really like dramatic uh, picture, um, uh, which is kind of the. Um, the, the other side of chromatic localization, which we had before, which was very colorful. But uh, when I asked uh, Dolly to, to do something monochromatic, then it, apparently it got depression and gave me this uh, kind of menacing looking hellscape uh, type image. Um, so yeah, monochromatic co-localization is apparently very scary uh, for AI. Okay. So this is an example of uh, where we can use this uh, dual um, Barbeck theorem. So uh, as uh, earlier, we have this category of EN local spectra. And uh, we can pass from EN local spectra to EN minus one local spectra. This is kind of figuring out what lies between two different uh, wavelengths in this analogy I had before uh, of this uh, chromatic machine. And we denote by uh, MN the full subcategory consisting of the objects, which are the fibers of these uh, localizations. So we essentially try to like pick out exactly one wavelength of light and then study only this wavelength. That's why it's called monochromatic, which because you only have one chroma, like one wavelength. 
And the inclusion uh, of this um, category into the category of EM local spectra has a right adjunct. This is a smashing co-localization, um, which um, satisfies the dual monoidal bar back theorem we gave above, giving us an equivalence of MN to co-modules over the monochromatic sphere. And why is this cool? Why is this important? Uh, the category MN, MN is equivalent to KN local spectra. So this gives us like a co-modular approach to uh, KN local spectra and, and then like the individual uh, smallest pieces of stable homotopy theory. So uh, that's why I found it find cool at least. Um, yeah, I'm going uh, quite uh, f fast apparently. So um, um, I uh, only uh, here at the end have um, some like um, uh, ideas I want to uh, to build on. Uh, some of these are working progress uh, and um, and uh, might um, might need some time to to prove uh, like uh, really rigorously. Uh, and some of them are, I think, already done. Um, but yeah, I told uh, told you a bit about like these contra modules, which are modules over this um, this um, internal home object coming out of a co module object. And in the case of um, we had the in monochromatic colocalization, this uh, monochromatic uh, sphere MNS, uh, which we take in co modules over, this is a co ring object. So if we hum out of this coming object and take our, like take the internal hum uh, and take modules over this, this gives us like uh, contra modules in the category of EN local spectra. And um, yeah, I'm gonna say I think at the end uh, what this category should be. Um, but uh, there should be some way of viewing um, or recognizing these contra modules. When is uh, a category equivalent to contra modules over some core ring. And this requires a bit of different thinking because we can't uh, use this um, normal um, projection formula that we had before, which is uh, a very standard thing to have in a bunch of categories. Um, and this um, projection formula gives an equivalence between the two monads and the two co-monads that we had before. But in the case of contra modules, then we are in tensoring with something. We are humming out of something. So we need to make some sort of different uh, projection formula that I don't know um, like how natural it is, how much it appears in nature. I haven't found that many examples um, yet, at least, I think. Um, so there might be some um, work to do there, but there are also this, this should give like a contramodule Barbeck theorem. It's like, a, yeah, a recognition theorem for for when uh, something is actually just contra modules. And uh, this, um, in the classical like algebra literature, then uh, there's a duality between co-modules and contra modules. They, um, they always have um, um, an ad adjoint pair between them, which is sometimes an equivalence, depending on uh, which co-ring you're taking um, them over. And in um, in uh, chromatic homotopy theory, or um, I think homotopy theory in general, then there's a, a something called local duality, which is kind of a um, duality between taking uh, local homology and local cohomology. That's the classical uh, classical um, um, result, and you can do the same thing in in um, in like uh, chromatic homotopy theory. And this is what gives you the equivalence between. Um, uh, I had uh, below here the category MN is, is equivalent to the category of K-local spectra, and this duality is what gives you this equivalence. Uh, but uh, this should give us like an uh, alternative description of local duality via co-modules and contra-modules, which I think would be really cool if you had like this contra-module Barbeck theorem. And uh, we had uh, this normal monoidal Barbeck theorem, uh, which gave us a local version and a co-local version. Um, and then we had like a dual. And I think we also should have a local and a co-local version of this dual. And maybe also like a local and a co-local version of the contramodular uh, Barbeck theorem. And uh, if all this goes uh, as planned, um, then we will have like a bunch as like a string of equivalences uh, of alternative descriptions of K and local spectra. Um, so some of these are, are already well known. Um, 
the category of can local spectra is equivalent to like Ian local spectra, but you take complete objects with respect to some uh, some naturally occurring ideal. Um, this is uh, by this local duality um, setup. And we know it's equivalent to the category on the furthest right, which is this monochromatic category. And this is torsion objects in Ian local spectra. And the co-module or the dual Barbeck theorem uh, gives us an equivalence to the co-module category of the monochromatic sphere, uh, which is uh, the, the third uh, on, the, on the right. And kind of the, the conjectural uh, two in the middle here is uh, the contra modules over the monochromatic sphere, which should be equivalent to the category of chemical spectra. And uh, since uh, the monochromatic sphere is the, uh, the monoidal unit in the monochromatic category, then it's also dualizable. So we can dualize it, which gives us uh, like tensoring with this, um, this, this dualized, dualized uh, monochromatic sphere is a monad and taking modules over this monad should also be equivalent to this category of contra modules which gives us then a way to view the category of KN local spectra as modules over some, um, some ring object. And this is not the KN local sphere um, because we know that the category of spect or KN local spectra is not equivalent to the category of KN local sphere, uh, but it's kind of close to it. It's the closest thing you can, you can uh, um, dream of or hope for, which is this dualized monochromatic sphere. So, um, yeah, most of these equivalences are already well known, uh, but uh, these uh, two in the middle, the contra modules uh, approach and the modules over the dual sphere, and I think uh, I think I have a proof for them, uh, hopefully to be uh, made uh, rigorous soon. Um, but yeah, that is all I want to say, and I will end with a picture of uh, Moravec-A theory, uh, which you can obviously see from the picture. I think um, it's at least very clear to me, uh, made by, of course, again, Dalai too. So yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, if there's any question, I'll be happy to try to answer. Great, let's, uh, let's give Turgi a quick round of applause. <clears throat> And right, yeah, if anyone has any questions for the speaker, feel free to unmute yourself or ask in chat or whatever is most comfortable or convenient for you. I did have kind of a general one, which I guess I could have asked way earlier, but it was just how much more control do you have over, you know, these categories that are modules over monads or co-monads? So um, the reason you kind of want uh, your categories to be category of modules is because we know a lot about them from algebra. So uh, once you know a lot about these categories, then you can um, take a lot of the results and just pull them straight into the infinity category world. Uh, um, so there's a lot of like nicest results and things that follow from, from these uh, situations. Um, so it, it, it allows us to use more tools, I guess, and uh, just to, to uh, yeah, steal results from the algebra people. Another thing was um, in looking at this, this like monochromatic sphere, like the MN of the mm -hmm. sphere spectrum, I was kind of wondering like, is much known about what like pi star of this thing is, or does it just, you know, fit into a fiber sequence with the KN local guys or? Um, no, it's, uh, it's not a very well behaved object uh, in some sense, or uh, it is well behaved, but it's, it's very uh, little studied. Um, so I, you can probably compute you can compute compute its um, its uh, homotopy groups from this uh, fiber sequence with uh, en and en minus one localization, um, but uh, at least uh, for for small ends, I guess. Um, but in general, I have no idea what the homotopy groups are. <laughs> like, do you think it would be too much to also... expect that you know if n is like a prime or something that you could somehow get the the p components of like the stable homotopy groups. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, you should be able to um, compute them by like taking the the stable homotopy groups of the spheres and then like taking a local cohomology of these. So you kind of already have to know the the stable homotopy groups, I think. 
unfortunately. <laughs> Great, yeah. So, any any other questions before I stop the recording? All right. So maybe not. Let's let's thanks thank Torgier once more, and uh, we'll stop the recording there.